from Super League to Olympic distance to age group world records to Kona. Go longer with the right fuel at the right time with S Fuels. Swim, bike, and run. Woo! Oh! Do 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 Hello, man, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to 11 Year Breakfast Bob from beautiful Huggos on the Rocks. My name is Bob Babb. We're brought to you by Master Spas. As fuels go along, our Hoka Let's Fly, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Quintana Roo, Zoot, the original triathlon brand, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. And speaking of our Challenged Athletes Foundation, one of the athletes we are so proud of, Mr. Rob Balukas, attempting his first Ironman World Championship. Wow. Give a round of applause for Mr. Rob Balukas. How you doing, bud? Doing good been a little bit of a journey yes longer than i expected so we're talking you were in the triathlon living mm -hmm. in norcal and you were training for a race training for the santa cruz half ironman uh and my it would, would have been my first one having a great year like moving up from a sprint to a olympic and uh the, one of the last um uh what's the what's the the uh malibu uh, no, no the one in um near uh oh my gosh wildflower my wildflower did okay. wildflower one of the last years and then we said hey let's do a and this is 2015 2015 seven yeah. years ago and then well, you, you crash i crashed the weekend before the race uh we were on our last training ride a very infamous road lucas valley road in marin um a corner that people up there know well i took it too fast um not not trying to um but took it too fast and lost control of my bike and ended up going over the side of the hill yes landing 20 feet down did you know right right away that okay this is really serious surprisingly no i thought i just had a broken collarbone and a lot of adrenaline running through my body right and uh what it turned out to be was neuropathic pain from basically my like torso down similar to lauren parker like uh, we, were, we were talking about it the other day like similar just excruciating you know on fire pain from the, that at that time i thought was just again adrenaline and right a crash but it turned out i'd have it to this day at least so when the doctor told you what it was, mm -hmm. uh, that has to be like the worst moment of your life. I mean, it, I don't know if, you know, if I was uh, just disconnected because of everything that was going on and it was, you know, such a big or ordeal. I really didn't understand. Right. You know, I thought L1 burst fracture is what they told me. And I said, OK, what does that mean? Yeah. How's my bike? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> is my bike OK? Yeah. They're like it's at the fire station. We'll go get it and find out. But uh, you got bigger problems to deal with. And I you know, you were like, okay, so what's my rehab, and when what's do I get rehab? back on my bike, and when yeah. do I go race again? Yeah, I have a few months out, right, and then I can jump back on. And they're like, no. Yeah, no, it's a bigger deal. It, I didn't have. I I really appreciate my doctors because I didn't get the you know you're going to have an X percent uh, X percent of chance to walk again. Right. They just said, you know, this is what's going on, you know, and and they let it wash over me in terms of like the severity of what was going on and the situation I was in. How did it change your world? I mean, drastically. I always say I was 38 when I got hurt. I was an average Joe, you know, middle of the pack, age group triathlete before, um, and lived a lived you know a good amount of life, and uh, all of a sudden I was in this new world, um, you know, and seeing things from down here. Well, we were just talking about that. It's like uh, butts and belt buckles. Yes, yeah. it becomes a world, right? It becomes yeah. really, really tough. When did you find out about? Because people don't know about sport. For right. somebody who's a challenged athlete now, and you had been in triathlon really for a pretty short period of time, you probably hadn't run into people in hand cycles right. or racing chairs at that point. Yeah, I mean, this logo, you kind of know from periphery if you're in the triathlon world, which I did, but I didn't pay much attention. Of course not. Yeah, and then uh, uh, fortunately, one of my training partners works for Alan Schenken, who's on the board at... Challenge Athlete Challenge Foundation. Athlete Foundation, and you know, everything in Northern California goes through Schenk. <laughs> And so she said to me, she explained to me Challenge Athlete Foundation and, and who Alan was. She said, when you're ready, uh, he'd love to talk to you. And I said, fantastic. When would now be a good time? <laughs> and, and he comes right in. Yeah, and he sent me a text. He said, we want to support you. And by golly, they did. They did. So how did, how did CAF help you? I mean, the first thing it did, uh, 
they they I was I was uh, my introduction was a uh, annual ride that Meredith uh, Kessler used to do a spinathon a right? spinathon it was a four hour ride with her and they invited me in and I, I they set up a hand cycle on a trainer right next to her I did you know I was I don't know three four months into being injured early early and I you know they come come in and do the uh, you know do a few minutes and uh, you know take the pictures and smile and do whatever you want you know and I ended up doing all four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Three With months her. after injury, and, and I was really proud of myself because I did the you know the the ending intervals you know like the ending the ending like tough intervals I did them with her and I was like hey I had it in me, that's cool you know I talked a lot about it. I'm gonna be doing a triathlon in a year but to see you know have that little baby step was that was huge a little bit of proof in the can right well because then you know okay this this is still part of my world I yeah. was in the triathlon I'm still part of that. Yeah, and yeah, it was. Yeah, I met I met uh, Molana. I met uh, I don't know if Sid was there, um, but a bunch of uh, challenge athletes and a bunch of pros who were in, you know in the Bay Area. Right. And the community that I'd already known through my Golden Gate Triathlon Club was just starting to grow, um, and it was really exciting. And at the end, I got an invitation to the San Diego Triathlon San, Challenge. Well, no, to the uh, Para Triathlon Camp. Oh, that we did in San Diego. Yeah, and I I always say I uh, when I was in the um, ICU and I was uh, saying I'm going to be doing a triathlon in a year and it kind of dawned on me I wouldn't be walking across the finish line yeah. I started googling wheelchair triathlon you know um, and uh, a grainy picture of this guy comes up turns out it was Carlos Moleda here in Kona back in the you know back in the day five time Ironman world champion in hand cycle yeah. yeah and he was a coach at the uh, para triathlon camp and would go on to you know develop a relationship with him and he coached me for a while until he retired and just Again, another extension of amazing community um, through Challenge Athlete Foundation that got me here today, sitting with you. So when you came down to La Jolla to La Jolla for that for that camp, it's all it's swim, bike, run. Getting back in the water for mm -hmm. the first time when you don't have use of your legs—that's mm -hmm. scarier than crap. It's scary and weird, but amazingly free okay. to be in La Jolla in San Diego. At the Cove, yeah, yeah. Yeah, supported. Ironically, I was swimming with you, not knowing who you were. You were my support person, and we went for just a, you know, a lap out into the water and yeah. back. And the water's the best because, you know, you're weightless and you can just go. And you're, you know, there's something more free about being, rather than being weighted down, you know, on, in a, on wheels in a wheelchair. Right. So then you start doing some of the shorter, Malibu, you start doing some of the shorter, and just, again, to be a paratriathlete, you need, you're basically, you need a Sherpa, right? Oh, you yeah. got the amount of, you got your regular chair, your racing chair, your hand cycle, your spare wheels, yeah. your everything. I'm my own GI Joe. I come with a lot of accessories and I, and I have <laughs> a, a Kung, and I have a Kung Fu grip from, uh, you know, all the upper body work that I have to do. Exactly. Yeah. So but it's one thing to say, hey, I want to do a triathlon in a year. Yeah. When was your first triathlon? It was uh, sooner than a year. I did really? Oakland. Um, I did Oakland and then I did uh, on, a, on a borrowed hand cycle uh, and then I did, uh, I, I don't remember which order, I think it was Oakland and then I did Santa Cruz, all sprint distance, right. of course. Yeah. And then I did Malibu um, with a couple of other, uh, you know, yes. paratriathletes and uh, it was like homecoming. It was just, I'm back in the zone and uh, it felt great. It wasn't spectacular by any means, you know, but you got there. But I crossed the finish line and that meant I'm you know, I'm back in the world. Okay, so you cross some finish lines, sprint races, and then when does it go through your head? All right, I, I wasn't really planning to do Ironman World Championship uh, when I wasn't in a wheelchair. I'd never qualify. Never would qualify. Yeah. But maybe yeah. in this new world, I could end up there. I, after those, after, so a year later, after I did those three triathlons, that winter, I, you know, I just didn't train. I just took a break. Yeah. And I kind of came out in the beginning of the next year and was like, you know, I think I went through a mild depression through the winter. I need to set some goals and get yeah. back on it. Somewhere in that year, obviously later, I was watching the uh, the uh, coverage of the NBC Ironman. Uh, yeah, yeah, out here, and I know I knew Alan Shankin was here, um, and I just texted him as I was watching. I said, "I want to do Kona," and he said immediately, "Text me back. We will support you." And I was like, "Yeah, it's on." <laughs> It's and on. that was what, 2016, like 17? 17, I think. Right. So now you're 17, 18, and I, it's one thing to go short, but now you're talking nutrition yeah. and butt issues and yeah. the right hand cycle and all that, gearing, uh, that transition. How tough was that? I mean, it's, it's wild, like just all the stuff we have to take, you know, and the anxiety of, uh, of uh, 
it's survive, surviving uh, airplane trips yes. to get here. And we, uh, we have different tire sizes than athletes you know uh, upright bikes so like we have a smaller tire size so none of the none of their equipment works for none you. like the spares you know if there's a if there's a sag wagon out there like they don't have anything our size so right. we have to have it with us you know and so all of that added drama of you know just trying to keep your head on hoping that everything's gonna inflate you yes. know and not pop and get here in one piece and be usable um pretty cool yeah it's pretty cool and it's pretty like you know, tense. So going from that text to Alan Shankin mm -hmm. to the reality of that this is Tuesday mm -hmm. and on Thursday you're going to be in Kailua, right behind us. You're going to be in Kailua Bay yeah. trying to complete the toughest race on earth yeah. in one day using all arm power, swim, mm -hmm. hand cycle, uh, push chair. Yep. It's wild. I mean, yeah, I, I, you, people say, and I have a lot of friends who've done Ironman, that it's a sacrifice, that it's tough, that it's focused in and you can understand that it's kind of like a wheelchair you know like you can hear it you can you know in your mind that that's tough and it's going to take a lot but once you start to actually live it it just sinks in much deeper of the work the sacrifice the focus that it takes to do this and then throw in a pandemic <laughs> yes you know on top of that and uh it's been a journey and it's been a real um struggle and just real like uh you know, keep focused for another year, stay motivated, um, and just all out, like, you know, the motivation, or not the, the inspiration has left me many times, the motivation has left me many times, many times, and I've just had to go back to, I heard someone say base principles a while ago on a podcast, and I love that phrase, because it just means, like, back to the basics, back to the foundation, which is, I said I'm going to do this. Exactly. So I'm going to do it, and even if I'm grinding in this workout in my garage in the LA heat, and it sucks, and I'm not doing well, I just have to have faith in it that that's going to get me here. The interesting part is uh, a couple of years ago, when, after Lauren Park was injured, when she came to San Diego, mm -hmm. I connected her with Alan Voisard right away. Because yeah. he is like the absolute best person to teach somebody who's paralyzed how to swim. Yeah. You've been doing some sessions yep. with Alan for the last month or so. It made a difference? In a way, I beat myself up because I knew Alan. He was there coaching swim at the paratriathlon yes. camp. In, my, in the very beginning of my journey, I knew exactly who he was. And I regret not calling him sooner. Yeah. In two sessions in the last 90 days, he's completely changed my stroke and given me a different confidence that I was really scared of the swim. Swim is my, yeah. my worst element. Um, and I didn't grow up swimming. So I'm one of those people who took it on in their adult age. age and uh, he changed me up. And um, now I'm feeling like I'm going to get this done and, and uh, feel good about it. What's it going to feel like coming across that finish line on the E-Drive? I mean... I visualize it all the time. You know, it's like I'm probably going to cry. You, you know, should. it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a big, uh, a I'm big probably going to cry. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be really excited to, you know, to give, you know, to, to give you a hug, to give my wife Erica a hug. And um, it's just going to be really special to like see the, the climax of this journey actually happen. Love it. Yeah. Rob Lucas has been our guest, everybody. Pacho Man, Pancho take man. us out. It's a little hug to you. Bike and run day. Cheese. Cause it's preface with Bob. And Pacho Man.